Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over an introduction to UI animation inside of the engine. So, if you had a quick look at the previous tutorials, you'll see that we created very static UI. Um, there's not much interactivity, there's not much motion. It's very dull, it's very boring, and in today's episode, I want to show you how you can get your UI stuff inside of the UMG, um, inside of the UMG UI editor all moving. So if you take a quick look in my viewport here, you can see I've got a basic little object here, but as I press play on this animation, you can see it gets larger, it moves, and um, you know, it sort of fades out towards the end. And that's sort of what I want to show you how to do in today's episode. Um, you're going to use UI stuff like the uh, UI animation stuff like this for things like menus, interactive objects, um, kill feeds, whatever really. So before I do get into how we can do all of this, I'm going to show you a quick example in a game that I'm creating. So if I press play, if I was to go over to this little shop item I've got, if I press X, you can see it fades in instead of just instantly popping out and being in your face. It just makes things a little bit smoother, really nice really, and um, yeah. Also you might want to use it in menus, um, I haven't got one here to show you at the moment, um, but if you look at game menus you can see they sort of fade in and out with the buttons and everything, it just looks really slick. Also, when I go ahead and shoot one of these bot enemies that I've got here, you're going to see I have a little score thing that goes down in the bottom, you see it says plus 5, goes down towards the bottom and it sort of fades out. Like I said, there is lots of usage for, you know, UI animation stuff like this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look what we've got. So we've got a basic object and this basic object is going to have an animation attached. And these animations, they essentially allow us to change values of this object over time. In this case, those values are going to be for uh, transforming it, you know, location, scale, rotation, whatever. And then also the color and opacity. So here what we're doing is just changing the scale, location, and the opacity to make it larger, move it, and fade out. So you can see our little keyframes key here, and that's just telling the engine when to start changing whatever value. So if I press play, if I look at render transform, you can see the default value is zero. And then over time, as it moves on, you can see it getting towards the final value here, which is 468, which is the lower location. And then also for color and opacity, we've got another keyframe at the bottom here to make it fade out. Anyway, the whole purpose of the timeline is to essentially tell the engine to change the value of something over time. And you can have these little keyframes, um, you know, marked with these little white dots which tell the engine when to start changing that value. It's a very simple concept really. If you've worked with any other kind of animation editor, the concept behind it is exactly the same. So if you've worked with Matinee, you know, you start changing stuff over there with keyframes, or, you know, anything else like that, really. Even, even with video editors, it's the same. So let's go ahead and show you how you can do all of this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this test animation I've got here. So we can start from scratch. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new widget blueprint. Because, you know, like I said, animations are based around objects. And these objects, they need to be contained within a widget. So I'm going to call this test uh, widget animation for now. If you wanted to, you can put the uh, UI animation stuff into your HUD that you've got already, but for now I just want to work for blank canvas to make it as simple as possible for you guys to understand. So I'm going to work with an image here. So I'm going to click the image in the palette panel and I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here and I'm just going to chuck it towards the top. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, sorry, Hopefully by the end of the uh, I don't even know what's going on here and hopefully by the end of the tutorial We'll have it moving down and we'll have it fade out and that and we're also going to scale it a little bit So with this let's go ahead and create a new animation So to do that just go ahead and go down to the animation panel in the bottom left and then we're going to name this animation test one now with the animation selected we can add a component 
those components are going to be the objects that you actually want to change over time. In this case, it's going to be the image here. And you can see that's got the name image underscore 198. So press the big green component add button and go to image underscore 198. Now, with these components, you can add a whole bunch of different tracks. To do that, just go ahead and go to track. And under the drop down, just choose whatever kind of track you want. You've got color and opacity, cursor is enabled, pivot, transform, and visibility. Now, realistically, you're probably only going to use three of these. Those being color and opacity, transform, and visibility. So, let's just go ahead and add a transform track. So you can see sort of what they do. These tracks are going to show up on our timeline, just like this. And these tracks, we're going to be able to add the little keyframes on them. So if we go ahead and expand the render transform track, you can see we can now change the location, rotation, scale, and shear. So let's start off by trying to change the location of this object. We want to make it go down. So the default value is zero. zero. So we want to make a keyframe for that at the zero setting on the timeline. So at the start of the animation, it's going to be in this place. Like I said, these little animation, uh, these little keyframes actually tell the engine, you know, what data it should have at a specific time. So if we go ahead and press add new keyframe, it's going to add a whole bunch of keyframes at the zero setting. Now you can adjust where they get set to using the little slider here. By default, it should be zero. So the next thing we need to do then is we need to chain tell it to move down over time between zero and two, we want it to move down here and scale. So what you need to do then is you need to change the location. To make it go down, I'm going to drop, I'm going to increase the Y and make it come down here a little bit. And then you can see it's automatically making a new key when you change it at a different position in the timeline. Or if you wanted to, you can just manually press the little plus arrow over here at the top of the transform track. So now, if I go ahead and set this back to zero on the, on the little uh, slider, press play, you can see it's slowly moving down over time. And we've got some basic uh, motion now. Hopefully you're starting to get a better understanding of how the whole animation uh, process work, uh, the whole animation process works with timelines, keyframes, and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and change something else over time as well. And that's going to be the scale. By default, at zero, you can see at zero on the timeline, it's going to be one. I want to make it double in size by the time it gets to two. So go to two and change the X and the Y to two. And now you're going to see it starts to get bigger over time. And it just shows you how you can change all the different kind of settings, really. And, you know, add it into your timeline quite simply. So that's enough of the uh, render transform. Let's go ahead and add in another track. This time, I'm going to work with color and opacity. I'm going to click it, and we're going to see what values we've got. We've got R, G, B, and then opacity. The R, G, B being red, blue, and green. And uh, we've got values for 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. If you wanted to, you could add more of a certain color. But for now, let's leave the colors, and we're just going to do a simple fade out. So we're going to start the color and opacity at uh, two seconds. We don't want it to start fading out until then. So I'm going to make sure I've got a keyframe at the start just to be safe, just like this. And I'm also going to make a keyframe for three seconds and two seconds. So two seconds should also be uh, one on everything. And then at two, uh, three seconds, we're going to change the opacity to zero. So now between two and three, it's going to start fading it out. It's going to start lowering the opacity. You can see the value is actually changing here over time. So if you have a quick look, as I slide it along, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, and so on and so forth. So now, if we go ahead and press play, you can see we've got a very simple, basic little animation. Now, most of you should already know how to get these widgets displayed on the screen. If you don't have it on there already, just go ahead and open up your tutorial, uh, not your tutorial, sorry, your HUD class. Construct a new widget. I'm going to set this to 
test widget animation and then just add it to the viewport as simple as that really. Um, if you haven't got a HUD class already just go ahead and create one it's quite simple or use the default one. If you don't know how to do that make sure you go ahead and check out my previous HUD creation series uh, my previous HUD heads up display creation uh, videos there's part one part two and there's also an introduction to the UMG UI editor as well. So now that we've got it displayed on the screen, you can see the object is still static. It doesn't play, it doesn't move. If we want it to actually work, we need to tell it inside of Blueprints to actually play that animation. So once again, go ahead and open up your test widget animation, go to graph, and we're going to use a node to tell it to play the animation. So go to type in play, right click and type in play, and then just keep going and find play animation. Now we need to hook this up to some kind of event. There's a whole bunch of different events you could have like on the click of a button, uh, but for me, I'm just gonna do it so as soon as it starts, it plays this animation. So just hook that up. Don't worry about target for now, but under animation, we need to set something in here. If you can't see it in the dropdown, just go to the variables tab and go to animation. Now if it's not, if you can't see it already, just, uh, just Press the little expand arrow here for animations and then drag it in just like that. Press get and then hook it up to in animation. Now, if you wanted to, you could play around with a few different settings. Start at time, number of loops and play mode. Now start at time, if you wanted to, you can make it start at two seconds, three seconds, whatever you want really. It's just for changing it if you don't want it to start, you know, from the beginning. Number of loops to play is how many times it's going to play. If you wanted to, you can change this to two loops. And then if you wanted to, you can also change the play mode so you can make it go forwards, backwards, or ping pong. I'm just gonna work with ping pong for now. And, uh, or forwards. Forwards is probably gonna be what you work with, but I'm just gonna set it to ping pong so you can see it going backwards and forwards. So if I press compile now and press play, you can see our animation's working. It fades out, it fades back in, and it's just gonna keep going. It's kinda nice, really. Anyway, that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Hopefully you've got a better understanding of the whole UI animation process, the animation process and how keyframes work. Um, that's pretty much what I've been trying to show you, how you can change values over time on a timeline. So thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.